Hey everyone, I'm Mike Levin, February 28th, 2023, and I am getting myself set up on a Mac. I asked for a Mac in my uh, new job so that I can keep familiar with the other side here, and you can see that Macs are pretty much loaded with as much, uh, not as much, but quite a lot of distraction by default. Everything up to about here, the settings app, was stuff that uh, was already on the toolbar, because of uh, Mac, and I will uh, get rid of stuff. I will rarely be running Safari. I'll do it once in a while, but uh, this begins the process of getting rid of stuff that I don't or won't or shouldn't use uh, in the course of the day. I'm also getting used to this new trackpad, and they won't let you get rid of certain things, will they? Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Do they really not let you get rid of messages? Yeah, that was an optical illusion. They do. FaceTime. Again, this is that right click, left click thing. I tend not to use mice, so uh, I have to rediscover what is requiring a right click. So, you know, this is so interesting. Contacts we don't need, to do list. You know, I might use these at some point, theoretically, but. Um, they're visual clutter and visual distraction. So even if I use them, I don't want them here on the taskbar. My philosophical, my principles are pretty much the same on a Mac as they are on Windows, which is the only thing showing down here are those things which you're actually running and which uh, you want to be able to use this as a navigational item to switch between. If it's not running, it shouldn't be showing. Some of these things I should uninstall. I was much less kind when I made these equivalent video freeform. I don't even know what these things are. New stuff that comes with Mac. I was doing uninstalls left and right when I was doing this process with the start menu on Windows. Here I'm just trying to take this stuff off. Maybe I right click. Boy, that must be painful to watch. Uh, remove from dock. Okay. Explicit is better than implicit. Options. Remove from dock. Even though this is, you know, potentially good stuff and I might want to use it someday. Not these news apps. I don't need my news on my desktop. That's what we've got phones for. Social distraction is for your phone. Uh, your laptop, especially the one you work on during the day, if it's not primarily your game machine or entertainment, should just not have uh, all these distractions, uh, social medias, notifications, right? This is getting close to usability. Now, on my Windows machine, I keep uh, the icons I like to double click to you know run quickly up here because they get covered by a full screen app and they sort of disappear and fade away. So I'll probably be doing that. But now that I got it down to the basic apps, I'll keep it this way for now just to keep the video uh, running strong. Uh, let me think, let me think. Yeah, that's a clean up there. Can I just put an icon? I'll try something that's... Uh, Coin to sort of safe. I would love my my terminal to actually no. See that's remove. We would want to to do this trick now. Oh, and there's this concept of to the left or to the right of these divider things. I don't fully understand that. A lot of these things are just downloads uh, from my download directory that I can get rid of now. So I can open downloads and then empty trash. Maybe yeah open downloads and uh, yeah I got zoom installed on here today I got OBS I got installed and uh, that lovely thing that lets me run Linux a Linux shell you will notice and that's probably a good final thing here on this uh, just ad hoc video of cleaning up the Mac and getting it usable is the fact that this terminal that I'm gonna be using basically oh and look at that that's weird prompts there and it does not look like uh, what I want. I bet it comes up differently if we open a shell from there. Yeah, see, here's a properly uh, Ubuntu Linux looking shell with your dollar prompt. And in fact, you can go full screen. I love this. Max 
got to full screen before Windows did, and it's really nice, you know? And then you switch back and forth just the way. You can see when I say there's really no difference between the platforms anymore, I mean that. So my, my first screen will always be full screen uh, Linux. You know, soon I'll have my journal in here and I'll be able to journal full screen Vim on the Mac. And you can start to see how my work approach makes you multi-platform. My productive mode will just as nicely fit uh, on Mac as it does on Windows. And it's really Linux that it's all about. This next screen is going to be a uh, full screen Jupyter Lab instance coming up through some browser, but back ended through uh, Linux, back ended through this same thing here, because this is running system D, and I'll be able to start it as a service under here. Right? I would even maybe think of bringing this video the whole distance and getting this to be my Pipulate server. So typically, what I tell people to do, and uh, I guess this is where I need a browser and bring up Edge. I don't think there's anything proprietary here. Uh, hide my shortcuts. Not that there's anything private there either, but now you've got... I, this is a Bing browser screen, right? So I've been trying to see if I could get Bing, the new Bing, to come up in Edge on a Mac. The answer so far is no. Hello world. And if this were the new Bing, there would be a chat box around here, and there's not. So even though I have uh, the new Bing with chat, uh, Bing chat, Bing, oh, look at this. Hello world. Nope, that's just a pop-up over that. I thought that was chat coming up for a second there, but it wasn't. So yeah, there's some platform preferences. Even with the same login, it knows who I am and everything. It just isn't giving me chat when I'm on the Mac. All right, that's interesting. Uh, but I, what I want to do is show you, you know, normally when uh, you get your the Drink Me script, it's, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, well, yeah, github.com, that, that would do it. But more often I tell people mikelev.in slash drink me. And this brings you to a page from my public website. That's pretty interesting. I get to see my public website on a Mac uh, for the first time. I might have some headline size tweaks to make. But it brings you to this, which my instructions are to select all and to copy and to go to your desktop, make a install.bat file on your desktop using the same file name as I use there, and to run it. But that won't work on a Mac. But what this really does is at some point through the script, it actually hands control over to something that we can find on github.com. Yeah, it's in drink me. There it is. That's my repo. And then uh, see here's install.bat that we were just looking at, but it hands control over to install.sh. And I can probably, for the most part, just pick this up and get it to run. Uh, the trick that you would do on the desktop instead would be done uh, purely inside of a uh, shell, a terminal, uh, batch program uh, Linux side. So let's give that a try. Copy. I do know I have a few directories to make. I need to make a repos directory, and inside of there I need a transfer directory. But besides that, all these, all this stuff should probably just run on a uh, default Ubuntu. So let's give it a try. Maybe I make this a Pipulate server easier than I thought. I'm in the home directory, pwd. You can see I'm in home slash Ubuntu. So here I got a mkdir repos, cd repos, mkdir, transfer. Okay, and I can run the script maybe from one directory level up. And so I'm back in my home directory. And uh, pwd, yep, home, slash home slash Ubuntu. And we'll see if Vim is there. I say use Vim, right? Vim is kind of like pre-installed a lot of times. This will be install.sh, and there it is. I for insert mode, P 
paste. Escape to get out of insert, insert mode. Call in WQ to write and quit. LS, and there's the install script uh, sitting on my Mac with the uh, repos directory and the transfer directory under there. So I should just be able to run this. Now I will double check on uh, GitHub on the drink me script what context it's in when it runs install.sh. It's important to know if it's doing it as a uh, admin. So I can just uh, find on page install.sh. That's where it hands over control and it fetches it and then runs it and I can see you know execute as bash hyphen lic bash home ubuntu so um, that is running it under a bash script I believe as a user but without maybe your bash profile running or something there there's a couple things there but from a user context standpoint it's not running as root or else you would see uh, something like uh, like this here so that's the context I'm in on that terminal. So uh, you can try it. Clear ls um, dot forward slash install dot sh. Permission den denied. We take control of those permit. Oh, well, maybe we just try it with a uh, program like uh, bash Figlet command not found. Okay, so control C, control C, control C. Oh, control key is moved on a Mac. All right. Uh, okay, clear. Uh, apt uh, sudo apt install figlet. All right, so I got to make those two directories. I got to install Figlet, which services should be restarted. And the ten, I will take the default, whatever. All right, I'm gonna have to learn what these messages are, but I can uh, run my script again. It shouldn't be any damage in uh, having Control C I I know the stuff it's doing, so this is what I want to see. So it's uh, installing Python 3.11. The latest greatest Python. I'm experimenting with changing the font size uh, in process, but it doesn't look like uh, it likes that, or I have the wrong keys for it. I'll just let it do its thing. And also, my script is traditionally run on 20.04, not 22.04. So this is a double test. Okay. So my script is not truly unattended, especially here in this environment. So I will look at what uh, pops those warnings up and see if I can uh, get this automated for uh, if people running on uh, either a Mac in this same path using uh, this multipass, this Ubuntu multipass VM you know, host thing, uh, or just this should work on plain uh, vanilla uh, Ubuntu uh, server, desktop or server. Uh, so yeah, my Pipulate free and open source software uh, for SEO is uh, truly going multi-platform by being primarily Linux, exclusively Linux. The Ubuntu flavor of Linux, in fact, because a lot of this install script uses the um, Oh, look at that, it's saying stuff is done. A lot of this install script uses, think, 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 apt, uh, the Debian package manager, as opposed to, to the Snap Store and these other modern things that try and make it distro independent. So now that that's done, we can ls clear, uh, we can exit because we do want to start in a new session and give the new batch RC a chance to become active. Saving session completed. Does it not like really exit exit? Maybe you gotta do this. I guess you do. Get out of the browser for now and then we'll bring up a new shell and 
and it's CD'd into the repos directory. My bash RC is active. This is really uh, quite exciting. So now the thing to look at is using the screen command to see if it's running under system D, which it's not. Uh, there should be a screen running here. So we'll try starting it. It's, uh, it should just be um, start Jupiter. Now let's look again at our screen LS. No sockets found. Sometimes you got to check a few times. Uh, that does not look good. Let's uh, CD into user local L, yeah, a local S bin. LS. There's our start Jupiter, so I'm using the right command. Uh, I'll try it from in there. Still nothing shown under the screen. So it's not really running my uh, Jupyter Lab service. Um, yeah, it might not be fully set up. Let's take a look. CD slash ETC system D slash system LS and uh, let's see. I make a service here called uh, what do I call it? It's Jupiter. Is there, yeah, there's Jupiter service. Let's try starting it. Pseudo system ctl start uh, jupiter and uh, the screen command again because it tries to run it as a screen eh, still no sockets uh, let's see if it thinks it's active system ctl status jupiter Oh, deactivated successfully. So let's try uh, activating it. Enabled. Oh, activating with auto restart. Its status is activating with auto restart. So there's something in there that's just not letting it run. See, three seconds ago, every time I would do that status, it would have an under five seconds ago because it's trying to restart and restart and restart. And, um, you know, I'm just not seeing the error output. So I do have a little debugging to do, but as you can see, the basic principles I use, and I'll solve this stuff, so it's, it'll be difficult for me and not you, so that all the example code I'm bringing you of free and open source SEO software, while it will be Linux-based, there will be many roads in. There will be, you know, the road through Windows, the road through Mac, and the road through uh, a pure Linux platform, which is what you do when you set up a headless server anyway, which is something everyone should do uh, in their home. So everything they do on their Windows or Mac laptop, they can just synchronize out to something in your home cloud and have your own little instance of something running. So that's where we're going with this, and uh, it will uh, be bopping back and forth between the Mac and the Windows platform as I go, as I keep things all multi-platform. Uh, you know, we're completely technology agnostic, so long as it's Linux. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon, and don't forget to subscribe.